a lot of people don't actually know what I do. Uh, when I first started out in comedy, I would get some friends who own companies, big companies, and Douglas, just, just come my company function and tell some jokes. Huh? So they'll say, they actually tell me, just come and tell some jokes, huh? my company very boring. Huh? My company didn't very boring, you know, speech, 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 but just come and tell some jokes, huh? come, and, come and tell some jokes. And they'll ask me, how much do you charge to come and tell some jokes? <laughs> and I'm a comedian, right? It's actually a bit annoying because they do more than that. And I'll be like, ah, okay lah, just, you know, I'll, I'll say X amount, whatever amount that is. And this is the usual response. No matter what amount you give anybody in Malaysia, the response is always, wow, so expensive, man. <laughs> right? No matter what amount you give, you be like, wow, so expensive, ah. just tell some jokes to me, you know. <laughs> like suddenly, I'm doing him, like, he's doing me a favour, like, just tell some jokes, so expensive, ah. just come and tell some jokes, come on, Douglas, tell some jokes. Like, okay, fine. <laughs> I will charge you 10% of that <laughs> Alright, in fact, if it's not funny, you don't have to pay me. And I even throw in a few free songs or so. And the guy was like, wow, really? I was like, no, I was telling some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so painful sometimes. <laughs> but that's what I do, you see. I, uh, I stand here and I, I try and make people laugh. And it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. One of the main disadvantages I have is Chinese. Why oh, you laugh so loud? A bit too loud, that one. <laughs> no, because, I'll be very honest with you, Chinese people, not the most funny people in the country. Am I right? We're not known for being funny, no. no. We, we are, like, the, the most of the comedians in Malaysia, they're either Malay or they're Indian, or they're mixed white and Malay, right? There's even a saying in uh, Malay, in Bahasa Melayu, as to how unfunny the Chinese are. You want to hear it? Dua tiga kucing berlari, Cina buat lawak, saya pun lari. <laughs> So, as a, as a comedian, a lot of what I do is studying, is studying uh, all the situations. And so I know as a Chinese, a lot of Chinese people here, right, we are famous for three things and three things only. Unfortunately, being funny is not one of them, okay? <laughs> now, we are famous for three things. If you agree, you clap, now. we see with the same wavelength, now, okay? Right? Chinese are famous for three things only. Number one, the Chinese are famous for finance. Agree, you clap? Okay, okay, okay. Number two, Chinese people are famous for Kung Fu, right? Okay. Number three, Chinese people are famous for being along. <laughs> but what is a loan shark? A loan shark is actually finance and kung fu combined. You really? <laughs> so not only am I a Chinese comedian, I'm also the president of the Malaysian Association of Chinese Comedians, MACC. Okay, see so now. I mean, I got it. Younger people don't know. I'm talking about older people. You're getting scared. Huh? What? I'm busy. What? 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 You know, like, don't worry. I'm the, I'm the president of the Malaysian Association of Chinese Comedians. I'm also the vice president. <laughs> that ensures a smooth transition. Uh, you know. So, uh, what I do is, I do this. I, I, I tell jokes. And uh, sometimes people laugh. Sometimes they don't. I mean, if they don't laugh, it's a big problem because the organizer gets angry. I don't get paid. Right? <laughs> Uh, but sometimes, you know, they, they, they do laugh and uh, what I do is I look at things and I try and provide a unique experience. Okay, for example, do you realize that I was a former uh, English teacher? I realized that uh, Malaysians, we actually very confident with our, with our English level. We think when we speak English, the whole world can understand. <laughs> Not really true, huh? Because I had a friend from, uh, from London, his name is Paul, he's traveled many places, he's been to... Asia, Africa, and so he thought with all his experience he could understand the, the Malaysian accent. He was very confident that talkless may talk to us, yeah. Why it's not Bobby? Why? From London they speak in Tong Bobby, why? Yeah. I can understand the Malaysian accent, yeah, Tong Bobby, why? Yeah. I'm just gonna pop down to the member, why, yeah, member, why? Yeah. The member, yeah, member, why? Member, mama. <laughs> and order myself a roti kanai. It's up to you, do whatever you want. Yeah? After three days in Malaysia, this Matsali is crying. He's, he's distraught. He's no idea what's going on. He's tears. Good talkless mate. Why are Malaysians always obsessed with the antenna? I said, obsessed with what? Why are they always talking about the, about the antenna? I said, we are not. I said, you are, mate. You are. I went to the member. Yeah, they were talking about the antenna. I went to the post office. They were talking about the antenna. I went to the, to the, to the, you know, the pharmacy and they were talking. What's up with the antenna? I said, shut up, you. <laughs> We are not obsessed with the antenna, and he was like, alright, chill, chill, so what are we doing tomorrow? I said, tomorrow, first we go immigration, antenna. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
you think your English damn good, eh? Yeah, yeah, when you talk to the Matari, and then I, and then I, and then I, like, what, what, what? And that's the accent, huh? Yeah, okay, slowly get, no, no, take your time, take your time. Some jokes take time to get, man. Right? Go home, ask your friend, what was the joke about, right? And then, and then, and then, and then. It's okay, take your time. <laughs> Uh, but this is the accent. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the meaning is very unique in, in Malaysia. We use the word and the meaning is unique only to Malaysia. For example, I'll give you the word is nicely. Okay. Now, in English-speaking countries, America, Canada, Australia, uh, England, what does nicely mean? In a nice way. Am I correct? Am I correct? Nicely is in a nice way. In Malaysia, for some strange reason, nicely means thoroughly. Right? Nicely means cow cow. Isn't it? Like, yeah, it's the other day, uh, the stupid waiter, I scolded him nicely. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you scold someone nicely? Is that not Naughty, We don't simply, yeah. Simply in English-speaking countries, simply means uh, in a simple way, not complicated. Like for example, John, how were the decorations done? They were done rather simply. Right? Simply in Malaysia, simply means for no reason. <laughs> like, hey, the manager, I whacked him. You know why you whacked him? Simply. You know? <laughs> Whack, whack is a euphemism for to hit. Am I right? In, in Matali countries, right? Whack means to hit. In Malaysia, whack also means to hit, but we have multiple meanings. <laughs> in Malaysia, whack means to hit, whack also means to guess. Am I right? Hey, for SPM, what you answer for number 25? <laughs> Don't know, I whack only. Yeah? <laughs> whack also means to eat in Malaysia, right? The other day, I saw Rosma at the buffet, she whack everything. <laughs> I didn't say which one, huh? <laughs> you are laughing, huh? Yeah. Very brave. You come in and say, lah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in most countries, when you hit someone, you can, there's only two directions you can go. You can either beat them up or knock them down. Am I right? Two directions. Beat them up or knock them down. Only in Malaysia can you whack the pull upside down. <laughs> okay, so that, that, that's the fun part of my talk. <laughs> so that's, that was stand-up comedy. Now we go to the serious part. Okay, uh, this one. Mm, boring. <laughs> Out of joke creation, performance tips, work challenges, comedy and life. I was told that, nah, come here and give some talk because apparently some people might like to have a career in comedy or might like to go into comedy. I, I don't know why you want to do that. But if you are interested, there are avenues and I hope I can give you some tips as to how that is done. So the art of joke creation, this one is, is uh, okay, what is a joke? Can anybody try and guess? You probably get it wrong. What is a joke? Can anybody? Story. It's a story. Okay, part, part. Almost right. Almost right. It's a story. A lot of people say it's something that makes you laugh. Am I right? That's the that's the effect of a joke. That's the effect of the joke. So what what is a joke? A joke is primarily two things. It is two parts. Setup, punch. Sounds like mathematics, but it's not. It's it's not easy to to, to look at this. Okay, so for example. A setup creates the expectation and the assumptions. I, uh, and, and the punch is the, is the twist. Now, when I started, can you remember what I did when I, when I first walked on stage? I said hello, everything, and what was my first, my first joke in that sense? Which one? Round of applause. Round of, okay, once again, a big round of applause for me. That is, a, that is your basic joke setup. Because I went, uh, setup, uh, creating the expectation and assumption. I said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause for, in your mind, what is the next word? MC. And then I twist at the end, like very clever. And that, so then you, hey, 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 you know, like, like short circuit. Like, hey, hey, ha, 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 ha. That's what happens. <laughs> that's, that's essentially what happens. And, and this can be done in a, a lot of ways. Like, for example, another classic joke would be like, you know, like, oh, I, I banned your son from the swimming pool because he was peeing in the swimming pool. And then the mother is like, but everybody pee in the swimming pool. And the guy said, but not from the diving board. <laughs> you know, so... So, <laughs> um, so it's a uh, it's story. The setup is actually very important. A lot of people don't realize how important the setup is. They think the punchline is all about punchline. Joke, punchline, punchline. Your setup is important because the setup makes you think one way. And then my punchline, and pow! You know, so... Uh, for, and that's how you write parody songs as well. Um, What's a good, what's a famous song now? Uh, Ed Sheeran, okay, the, uh, we were just kids when we fell in love, you know what right? Okay, so what you do in the parody song is you just change, you just change the, the last part there and you get, because we were just kids when we fell in a well. 
Right. And, then, and then people were like, oh, it's a horrible, it's a tragedy, it's a, oh my god, they fell in a well. <laughs> but it's funny because in your head it's like, fell in love. Or like, excuse me, we fell in debt, you can do that. So, so you know, it's, it's just basically taking the audience, pushing them one way and then twisting it. And that's what creates the, the laugh. So the punch delivers the surprise twist and reality, boring. That is basically what a joke is. Okay, next. So, having a joke is great. Can you perform it? A lot of people make this mistake. They come up, they got a joke in their hand, in a piece of paper. Uh, so, uh, a Chinese uh, and a Malay uh, and an Indian uh, go with a uh, die every time. <laughs> That's not stand up. That is like your drunk uncle at a party. <laughs> okay, in, in uh, stand up, you must believe that I, I come up here and I, I've got nothing. I've got nothing prepared. That's how amazing I am. That's the impression I have to give you. That I come up here, he just walked in. He sat down there, the next fellow went to the toilet, he's unprepared. And he just walked up and starts coming up with funny stories. Not true at all. I have prepared everything in my head. I know exactly what I'm going to say. That I joke in the beginning part. I've rehearsed that many, many times. The impression is you give people, hey, it's fine, no, 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 nothing wrong with it. Because that's the magic. That's why you got to be prepared. No matter if you're planning on trying an open mic night, even if they give you three minutes to go on stage somewhere, don't just go, oh yeah, a funny thing happened to me yesterday at the mama. I think I can tell that story. No! <laughs> Write it out. Write everything out and be sure you have that and be prepared and memorize. Don't, don't, don't like, oh, and talk halfway. Oh, where was I? Uh? Oh, sorry, sorry. But then you, go and, you, know, you break the illusion. You've lost the audience. Forget it. Go home. You must be aware, of being aware, and you've got to know who you're performing to. So like, like today, I've got other jokes, I've got other stories as well. And then, I, just, like, I was like, uh, asking my, my manager, I was like, who, who, are, who are coming to watch this? And I said, okay, some alumni, I've got some parents, got some students, there'll be some children. Okay, cancel out all the sex jokes. All the sex jokes, take and throw one side. Because you've got to be aware, it's going to be a bit awkward. Because I'll tell you this, right? If you've got, if, you've got <laughs> if, in, if I'm in a club, it's dark. One, two sex jokes. Okay, fine, people laugh. Same people, you put them in a bright room or like this, like an auditorium, next to them is the sun. How do laugh? How do laugh? It's like, hmm. Or like your wife is there. Like, you're not gonna laugh. Okay, so you gotta be aware. Being observant is another thing. Have you noticed the amount of times you've gone to an event and the speaker is speaking and no one is paying attention? Have you seen that happen before? You have, right? And, and people are on the handphone, they're whispering to each other, they can't be bothered. And this guy just goes on and on and on and then because of that. In stand-up, that's not going to work. Why? In a speech, you just read your speech and you're done. In a song, I sing the entire song, I finish, there's a social cue, people applause. In stand-up, the moment I pause, I need the laughter. I need that feedback. Stand-up is, is so powerful because you get told people hate you, Two seconds after you stop talking. I throw a joke, no, no laughter. I hate you. <laughs> I'm rejecting you. On and on and on. But if you succeed and you get the laughter, who's the hero? I'm the hero and nobody else. Are you? I'm the hero. You, you, you die hard, but you succeed very hard as well. And that's, that's the, the line you got to go through. That's why you got to be prepared. you got to be aware, you got to be observant. you got to know if you've lost the audience, you've suddenly I've gone to a joke. And half the audience are like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't, I don't know what, what, is, what is this about. And so you've got you to immediately scan. I think people have lost it. They are tired or what? And you switch. And, and so you cannot just, uh, I, I prepared this. It's not going to work. And finally, you must be in control in the sense that I, I, I mean, I didn't do it today because I'm not doing pure stand-up. But if I was doing pure stand-up, you'd all be in darkness. No, seriously, I would, I would make sure I would switch off all those lights and have one light here so that you cannot look at anybody else and like, hey, hey, what do we do? No, doing what? No, no. <laughs> Nothing. It would, it would be dark there. I would make sure that in the beginning, I would have music playing first or something to make sure that you are used to a level of sound and then I would switch off the music so to make you all uncomfortable. Like, hey, what's going on? Something's happening. Something's happening. To, I got to control every sense that you have. Well, not your smell. I mean, you can smell whatever you want, but... <laughs> Like, if I can, I will control. I will control all of your senses. Make sure you look at one place at where I want you to look. And only then I can deliver the, the joke to the fullest potential. Okay, no more time anyway. Okay. So, what are the work challenges? Okay, managing perception. The first one is, 
it's, it's a weird thing because when you're a comic, you establish that as, as a comic, it's, the advantage is, okay, when a lecturer comes up, he's a lecturer, the perception is this guy is a lecturer. He, he goes, he talks, 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 he pauses. When he pauses, the expectation from you is, well, he's taking a breath, he's going to the next topic, he's done something, am I right? When a comedian, when I talk, 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 and I pause, what's the expectation? I've made a joke, am I right? So that is the perception I've got to deal with. You have to deal with that. That, is, that helps you, but it was also a disadvantage because they think you're like that all the time. And it's very bad because then you're not taken seriously. You go on and I can be doing very, very, you can be doing contract negotiations and then they think, oh, you're joking, no, it's fine, it's, it's, it's joking. You got to manage your time and, expect, and uh, time and responsibilities because as a comedian, most of the time you will not be working in a nine to five job. You will be a freelancer. When you are a freelancer, you, there is a, a big temptation to be extremely lazy and not do anything. You have to manage that. You're going to know you have deadlines. And again, you leave it to the last minute to try and churn out all your jokes, you're going to fail. Uh, expectations again. I have had things to, I have had requests to do funny videos. Uh, to sell, I don't know, the marketing YouTube right now is very popular. You do a funny video, hope it goes viral, and it will sell the product. Some products I feel cannot. I got one housing project. You're selling a housing project, Douglas, can you do a funny video? I can do a damn funny video. But who's going to watch a funny video and go like, ah, yeah, I think I want to spend 750,000. <laughs> it's not going to work. You've got to manage this expectation. You've got to tell the client, okay, I really want your money to do this video, but I don't think my jokes are going to make anybody buy a house. There's just some things you can and cannot do. Finally, managing criticism, so you know, I mean, you're in your internet generation. People are going to be more free with negative comments than they are with positive comments. Because when you receive something good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's very nice, very good. Maybe I'll say thank you, whatever. But when something bad happens to you, when it's a bad experience, you want to lash out. If someone hits you, you want to hit back. Right? It's like, bad, I want to, I want to, I want to hit back. If you get a very good massage, you don't feel like you want to massage the fellow back. No, it's just, like, thank you, I feel you know, very good. So, you're going to manage things. Bad things will happen and you will get uh, all these criticisms. Finally, wow, in under a minute, let me try and do this. Historical purpose of comedy. There are many theories to this, but one of the earliest uh, 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 comedy drawings apparently people found was in a cave. And there was uh, a huge uh, human, like this caveman drawing uh, with a spear, fighting a small tiger. And they were like, oh, this is, I think this is comedy because back then, the humans were small. The tiger was big. So what they did back then, even like cavemen people were like, going, mm, you know what, there's tension here. We are feel oppressed by all these big predators and these big tigers and all. Let's, let's do some, you know, they, they probably didn't know it was comedy, but it was a way of handling their problems. And so that translated on to later when we had democracy and People were like, the, the public didn't, they couldn't read, and so they would watch all these comedy plays, and the, people, the plays were, were, were meant to educate the public on what was happening in, in Congress, or in, uh, or in the cabinet, or in, or in Parliament. And it was a way of, of checking, checking the government, hey, I know what you're doing, huh? I'm making fun of you now, I know what you're doing. And that was what comedy was all about. And then, uh, well, the role of comedy in society, make people laugh, huh? <laughs> The rewards. Let's go, let's, I'll go straight to the rewards of comedy. Um, you get to come and talk about comedy at 11 in the morning. That's it. Now, well, if that is your passion, how do I know I wanted to do comedy? It's because I was, I'm one of those people who are addicted to finding the funny. I need to find the funny in everything, which can be very bad at times because of the context. Just remember one thing here, if, if, if anything. Comedy is very rewarding because you get to see the feedback is immediate. It's one of those few jobs where the feedback is instantaneous. You can do a, do a, be an actor, do a movie. You won't see the feedback and maybe a year later, two years after, after processing, after editing, after all that, then, oh, yeah, they like me. Oh, they hated the movie. In stand-up, it's immediate. I tell you something, I pause. Do you like me or do you hate me? And that is very, in my opinion, risky but also very rewarding. But comedy is always about context, place and time. And this is what I always believe with, all right? A coffee in a cup is a drink. Coffee on your shirt is dirt. It's the same thing, you know, coffee. But one you like, one you hate. And that essentially is comedy. Right place, right time, you will fly. Wrong place, wrong time, people crucify you.
okay, and don't care who you are. You could be the former prime minister making a stupid kangkong joke. Wrong place, <laughs> wrong time. You are out. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful uh, session. Bye bye.